when you picture Jesus walking down the road, what's your mental image of that? Who do, who do you see with him? You see Jesus and the twelve. You see Jesus go off with the three. You see Jesus with the crowds. In Luke 8, there are three verses, Luke 8, 1 through 3, where it depicts Jesus traveling with his 12 disciples, but also with some other people. Here's what it says. After this, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chuzza, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. That's quite a different picture than Jesus and his twelve, Jesus and the three, Jesus and the, and the crowds. We see Jesus traveling with women. This is very revolutionary for Jesus' day. Jesus is crossing over all kinds of social and cultural lines that we are largely unfamiliar with. They lived, obviously, in a very patriarchal time, in a patriarchal age where women were, were really seen uh, in a lesser status than the men. There was constantly a fear that the women would be some, subject to some kind of impropriety or bring impropriety upon themselves, and in doing so bring shame upon the family and an honor and shame culture. Women did not travel with men in this way in Jesus' day. And what's more, you have a married woman traveling with Jesus and his disciples, which is even more extreme, even more outside the norm. And, and Jesus didn't just allow this to happen. I have a feeling that Jesus actually encouraged these things to happen. And not only did they travel with them, but they're financially supporting Jesus and his ministry. We think about these men who had given up tax collecting and fishing and other jobs to go and follow Jesus. How are they supported? It's the women who are financially supporting the ministry of Jesus here in Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. But Jesus, again, he not only allowed these things to happen, I think he encouraged these things to happen. We see in Luke chapter 4, verse 27, Jesus is with the woman at the well. The disciples have left and they come back and they find Jesus talking with this woman by himself. And they're very disturbed that he would have a conversation with this lady out here, the Samaritan woman, uh, because there are certain lines that you just don't cross in this day. This is part of the accusations that Jesus constantly had leveled uh, against him. He is eating with tax collectors and sinners. Why sinners? Uh, Because they're assuming that these people are up to no good. They're assuming that these people are, are, are crossing these lines of impropriety and that Jesus is right there also crossing lines of impropriety with various ladies, that this is not the way men and women interact. This is not how you're supposed to do it. But the reason I say I think Jesus encouraged it is in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. In this chapter, uh, we have Jesus, the story of Jesus with Mary and Martha. And I want to read these verses. It says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha had opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha, who was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made, she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed and indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus didn't just allow Mary to to be there. He encouraged it to beware. What did it say? Sitting at his feet, listening to what he said. This is the classic position of of a disciple sitting with their rabbi. Rabbis teach, the disciples sit at their feet and and listen to their teaching. Who is Mary sitting with? She's sitting with the men. She's receiving the same instructions as the men. In Judaism of Jesus' day and within a couple hundred years of Jesus' day, there were some rabbis who said women were not fit to be taught. It was wrong to teach a woman the Torah. Uh, They did not take on, male rabbis did not take on female disciples. Jesus is crossing these lines. He's taking women and he's elevating them. It's hard to see it when we're not in tune with their culture, but it's throughout the Gospels and the way that Jesus sees women, treats women, travels with women, and invites them into the conversation. Jesus gives women a seat at the table, and we should too. We should value women. We should elevate women. We should love women. We should respect women just as Jesus did and continues to do today.